Hola, ¿qué tal? ¿Cómo estás? Welcome back to Spanish Lessons with Professor Jason. Today I'd like to talk about a topic that many of you have asked about, and it is compound tenses. How to form compound tenses in Spanish using the verbs estar, which is the equivalent of the auxiliary verb to be in English, and haber, the equivalent of the auxiliary to have. This is just going to be an overview of the compound tenses. Maybe later on I'll have some lessons that focus more specifically on each of these tenses. Okay, so a quick overview on Spanish compound tenses using estar and haber. All right, here we go. So on the whiteboard, what I have are three sentences in English that use compound tenses. In the examples here, the compound tenses are being formed with a form of the verb to be and a present participle, which in English are the forms of verbs that end in ing. So we have I am speaking, compound form, am, she is eating, the form of the verb to be is with the present participle eating, and they were in the past here, the past tense of the verb to be, and then the present participle writing letters. Okay, and I'm going to show you how we could render all of these in Spanish. It's very similar. Okay, nothing to worry about. So, I am speaking. The form of the verb or the, equiv the equivalent of the verb to be that we're going to use in Spanish to form these compound tenses is estar. Okay, so you need to remember how to conjugate estar, right? We have yo estoy, tu estás, él or ella está, estamos, okay, etc. Okay, and keep in mind that these compound tenses can use the present form of estar, or a past form of estar, or even a future form of estar. I will be speaking. Okay, this one would be something like yo estoy hablando. Yo estoy hablando. Here we have a form of the verb estar, to be, and our ando on the form hablando is the equivalent of the ing in speaking. Okay, what was our other example? She is eating. Ella está comiendo. Comiendo. Okay, we have a form of the verb to be, está, and our present participle yendo, i-e-n-d-o, yendo, for what we have here is an er verb, comer, hablar was an ar verb. Okay, and then our last example was they were writing letters in the past. Ellos, so I'm going to use a form of the verb estar in the past, estaban, which is actually the imperfect tense, escribiendo, escribiendo, I hope you can see that, cartas, that might be a little bit small to see, I'll try to write larger, escribiendo cartas. So in these examples we can see a form of the verb estar, yo estoy, ella está, ellos estaban, and then an ando ending or a yendo ending, escribir is an ir verb. So if we have an er verb or an ir verb, the equivalent to the present participle ing is yendo, i-e-n-d-o. Okay? Again, this is just an overview, so you can see the parallels between English and Spanish with uh, this auxiliary to be. All right. So quickly I'm going to move on to another auxiliary verb that we use in English and in Spanish to form compound tenses, and that would be the form of the verb to have, have as an auxiliary verb in English, and its equivalent in forming compound tenses in Spanish, haber. All right? So let's look at some examples in English first, okay? Something like, I have eaten. Okay, the implication here is already, right? I have already eaten. Or you have not, you can make it negative, called. Okay, remember these sentences, they're going to be our examples that I'm going to basically translate into Spanish. And then finally, I'm going to use an example in the past again. She had arrived. So what you can see here is, in the first two examples, my form of the verb to have is in the present. In my third example, the form of the verb to had, I've switched into the past tense. Okay? I have eaten. You have not called. She had arrived. You can see 
that it's a little bit harder to predict the endings for what are the past participle uh, verb forms in English. Sometimes it's en, sometimes, sometimes it's ed, sometimes it's a completely um, irregular form. I have done, she had made. Okay, So it's a form of the verb to have with a past participle form of the verb. That's our compound tense using to have. Now let's look at the equivalents in Spanish using the verb haber. Remember the, the combinations for haber are going to look like yo he, tu has, el ha, nosotros hemos, and ellos han. Okay, that's in the present tense, keeping in mind that haber can form compound tenses in several different uh, verb times, the present, the future, the past, okay, the subjunctive, etc. We're just dealing with the present here and maybe one past tense form, okay? So, I have eaten, yo he comido, and again, you're going to look at how the end of that verb form appears, right? Yo he comido, remembering that, oops, that comer is actually an ER verb, an ER verb. Yo he comido. Okay. Our second example was, you have not called, which would be tu no as, there's our form of the verb to have, haber, llamado, there's our past participle, llamado. Notice it's an AR verb and the ending is adu. And once more with a, um, I'm going to give you one more example of an AR verb because it was, she had arrived, right? Ella había, that's just a past tense form of the verb haber, the auxiliary to have, and then llegar, ella había llegado, another AR verb, llegado, okay? ER verbs are going to have the, for example, we take the ER verb vivir, or excuse me, the IR verb vivir, we have an ER in comer, but an IR verb, the past participle would be vivido, okay? Like he has lived, el ha vivido, okay? For an example, with an IR verb, all right? So this is just a quick overview of the um, compound tenses, right? We've learned that compound tenses are tenses that use a combination of verbs, an auxiliary verb and a main verb, and that in Spanish, the equivalent of to be is estar, and the equivalent of to have is haber. So that was just an overview of those compound tenses. Hopefully I'll have time to upload lessons that give more examples uh, for each of those two um, forms.